Hey guys, it's Joey Gaming and welcome back to the Joey Gaming channel. In today's video, I have a story time of me going camping with the exec. So that's awesome. Also, I know this I know the title says student council going camping or whatever, but um I was actually in a program called the exec. However, the exec is basically the student council. They actually are above the student council actually. We were the ones that actually planned it. However, student council does better in the title compared to exec because no one knows what the exec is, right? But people know what the student council is, so that's why I put in the student council. So that's the reason that title's like that. Anyways, it all started back in August of 2021. This was after USULC, and if you don't know what USULC is, if you didn't watch my uh, first story time about me going to USULC, I highly recommend it. I'll leave a card on the right right now. Go ahead and check out the first three story times of me going to USULC. Basically, USULC is a leadership conference held by Utah State University where they learn about leadership skills, like how to become a better leader, how to inspire people, how to lead people, and like basically it's just a leadership conference and how to make you a better leader at school when you're promoting events and stuff. That's what USULC is, and, uh, and there's a lot of these kids from Utah who are in their student council. They went over here, and we were close to the Utah border, so Utah State invited my school, even though we were in Idaho. So that was really, really cool. In 2020, we had COVID-19, right? COVID-19 was a big thing that hit the world, right? And you know, USULC, or Utah State University, decided, hey, we're going to cancel it this year. And do it online. So they did it. So they did USULC on uh, Zoom. Basically, they had all the schools come together on on a big Zoom call, and they just did the same thing there. It wasn't as good as the in person one, according to some of the people on the exec last year uh, for the twenty one to twenty two school year. Apparently, it wasn't as good. So Mrs. Government, not a real name by the way. That's her fake name. I, I'm not going to use her real name, but Mrs. Government. Decided, hey, you know what? We're going to have our own exec leadership conference. Just the exec. So, Mrs. Government and Mr. Government. I will talk about Mr. Government in a little bit. Like, later in the story. He's actually a very important part in this uh, story. Mrs. Government and Mr. Government have this cabin in the middle of these mountains, right? And it was really, really cool. They have, like, solar panels. They have, like, um, I don't know. It has, like three levels. It was pretty, pretty big. I'm not going to lie. So what Mrs. and Mr. Government decided to do is that they sent out a packet to everyone in the execs and, hey, we're hosting our own little USULC. And she ended up calling it the retreat. That was the name. That's the name that my student council, right, my exec uh, for the year I was a senior in, that's what we called it. So for the rest of the video, I'm going to refer to this camping trip as the the retreat because that was the name that we all gave it. And that's the name that Mrs. Government gave it. So from now on, when I refer to camping, I'm talking about the retreat. So in 2020, Mrs. Government said, hey, guys, we're doing this retreat thing. You guys are going down to my cabin. We're going to be spending a three to four days over there leaning learning uh, leadership skills and learning all about each other and stuff. It was actually a really, really fun event. And it wasn't just the exec, but the student council too. Keep in mind, guys, the student council, what they do is that they get elected, right? But they're below the exec. The exec has their own dedicated class where they sit around a big table and they talk about, hey, what we're going to do for homecoming. Oh, well, let's do this. I think the theme should be that, right? Or, oh, I have an idea. Let's do this and that, right? And that's what the exec is. The student council just comes in and helps, and that's it. So the student council and the exec went to this retreat thing, right? And last year in 2020, they found a bat in Mrs. Government's basement. So that was awesome. Unfortunately, I didn't see any bats when I went. Uh, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, they just found a bat last year, 2020. So that was cool. Like a week or two before I went to the retreat or to Mrs. Government's uh, cabin, uh, my glasses broke. Uh, you see, I, I'm blind. I need glasses, right? And my glasses broke. What happened is that one of the arms for the glasses broke. 
and I was freaking out. So I got tape, right? I got um, electrical tape, and I had to fix them. So I had to go to the retreat with this broken glasses. So that wasn't fun, right? I also was given the uh, packet that Mrs. Government wanted us a bunch of stuff that we need to bring, like certain clothes and come up with ideas. And since I was a senior, I had to come up with my own team building game. So that was fun. I will talk about that when we get there. Mrs. Government also mentioned that everyone will be creating music videos and assigned to groups. So she also told us saying, hey, make sure you guys download some music because while you're up there, there will be no internet to download any music. So go ahead and download music for some music videos. So got everything ready and day one of the retreat started. And just like USULC, we first went to the high school and then we carpooled all the way down. Luckily, it wasn't as far as a drive as going from my high school to Utah State University. It was only like a 20 to 25 minute drive from my high school to Mrs. Government's cabin. And what happened is half the exec and student council decided to split up and we were in a carpool. I decided to carpool with the senior class president. And for the sake of the story time, I'm going to call her Mackenzie. Uh, because Mackenzie is a sweet name, right? All the people I met named Mackenzie are all great. And the, and the senior class president is really sweet. So I'm calling her Mackenzie. Not a real name, by the way, but uh, you get the point. So anyways, I decided to go with the, uh, with the senior class president, which is Mackenzie, right? I get into her car, plus a few other ex student council and exec. And we start carpooling all the way down to uh, Mrs. and Mr. Government's cabin, right? And we get off the highway, we go up this, we go up this road, right? And we make it, and we turn and get get onto some dirt roads, and we climb up the mountain and stuff. And like eight minutes later, after driving through, we get into a forested area, and we arrive to the cabin. And uh, once we reach the cabin. We got out, and immediately Mrs. Government sent us to to this main area. What the cabin is and what the cabin looks like is that there is a bottom basement, then you have the main floor, and then you have a second floor. So it has like three layers, really, like three floors. You have the basement, you have the first floor, and then you have the second floor, right? Um, what happened is that she um, made us sit down uh, on these couches, right? And there were some other like bean bags and stuff, right? And Mrs. Government starts explaining what we're going to do. She actually has a full-on schedule on when stuff is going to happen. And I wish that I've archived those. I wish I would have taken, like, a picture or something. I wish I have would have archived it so, guys can, so I can show you guys the schedule. But I don't have those anymore. So Mrs. Government went over the schedule for the, for the next three days. She explained on what's going on, all, everything we need to understand. And, uh... One important thing you guys got to understand is that there's uh, how this is how we're going to do the sleeping stuff, right? So Mrs. and Mr. Government plus all the girls on the exec and student council are going to sleep on the top floor. And the top floor was insane, dude. On the top floor, they had like ping pong balls. They had like a pool table. They had like I'm pretty sure a TV, tons of outlets. It was really, really cool. It was like a fun entertainment center, right? All the girls plus Mr. Uh, government and Mrs. Uh, government would be sleeping on that floor. And then the boys, right? Um, they are going to be sleeping in the basement and they're going to be sleeping on the uh, first floor. Or outside, uh, Mrs. Government didn't really care as long as it's not the upstairs. And obviously, you do not want to mix teenage boys and girls together. So it kind of makes sense on why she wasn't letting the, the boys go up. So that was kind of the whole point there. Um, so that was fun. Um, the first thing that we did is that we were assigned freshmen uh, for orientation day. At my high school, I'm not sure about all the other high schools, but um, we have an orientation day for all the freshmen, right? Everyone in the exec was assigned to five freshmen, um, or sometimes six too, because it's not even an even number. So, we, so all the freshman class have been divided. Uh, so I got like five to six freshmen in my squad basically you got a list of all the freshmen on on these uh, on this piece of paper that I'm in charge of right and basically what I needed to do is I just needed to come up with fun stuff that I needed to do like I was I needed to come up with like a name 
right? Uh, and an animal because we all had to come up with an animal and a team name for the freshmen. Right? And basically what we're going to do is that we would explain the stuff about school, right? Ex uh, ask quest uh, ask them if they have any questions, right? And just help them along, right? And if, and if the freshmen ever needed help, they can go ahead and contact me or their exec uh, leader to help them out because, you know, they're freshmen, they're new to the school. And that's what happened. I came up with a few ideas. I ended up going with, decided to go with kangaroos because, you know, literally Joey Gaming and uh, my logo's a kangaroo. So I was like, hey, you know what? We're going to be the kangaroos. Uh, so that's what we did. And I like five to six people um, who are, um, we had five to six people who are uh, freshmen, right? Uh, keep in mind, there are 15 exec members. So, and we all each had like five or six freshmen. So that was cool. So yeah, we got all their names. We got their like um, addresses too, because we're going to show up to their house and drop off papers and get to meet them. We also had to make like treats and drop them off at their houses too. That's really, really cool. Uh, probably will make my, uh, probably will make a separate story time about, about that. Uh, um, so uh, stay tuned for that. So anyways, after the meeting got done, Mrs. Government said, all right, guys, we're going to start our water games, right? And unfortunately, I totally forgot that we were playing the water game. So I didn't pack a swimsuit, but I did have shorts. So put on some shorts and we played the, these water games. It was really, really fun. The first water game was you had to uh, take water balloons and go to a chair and sit on it. It, it was weird. I don't know what the purpose of that game is. I don't know all the rules. But that was the game that we played. Uh, the next game, we played Duck, Duck, Goose, right? And um, it was fun. People, uh, you know, I don't need to explain the rules of Duck, Duck, Goose. Everyone knows how to play Duck, Duck, Goose, right? And But the person who was the... Um, the, I don't know what it's called, the guy with the spray bottle, he was the guy with the spray bottle, obviously, so, uh, he starts walking around, he sprays a few people, and, um, and he doesn't get out for the few couple times, right, and this guy, right, comes to me and sprays me, and, you know, and just like Japan in World War II, uh, attacking Pearl Harbor, you would never ever want to do that, so immediately, I jump off, and I chase the guy around, and I tackle him. It was great. And I said, hey, don't mess with me, because I'm going to drop the the uh, the water equivalent uh, to a fat boy on you. And that's what I did. And I was like the only person in that round that would have downed him. We also played a few more times, but I didn't get sprayed again, because, you know, obviously they don't want to feel the wrath of Joey Gaming again, right? So that was good. So, uh, yeah, that was really, really fun. After that, we got changed, and we ate lunch. Uh, we ate lunch, right, and I uh, talked to Mrs. Government about my glasses, and hey, is it okay that um, that you guys can run me to to get some internet so I can talk to my parents and see if they can come and get me so I can get my glasses? And Mrs. Government said uh, originally that no, you can't do that. You're supposed to be away from the internet. And, um, and which, yeah, it makes sense, but she decided to let me go anyways, because, um, for medical reasons, since I needed to see, and I had, like, a piece of duct tape holding my glasses together, well, it wasn't duct tape, it was electrical tape, or black electrical tape, so she decided, yeah, we can, we, we'll, we'll, we'll work something out, um, and the plan was, is that, um, Mr. Government, right, was going to drive me down to get internet, and um, he was going to drive me down to get internet so I can contact my parents. And that was the whole plan. But it was going to be later tonight. So that was fun. So uh, the next thing that we did is we did a planning session. So we went back into that big open room, right? We sat down and we pull up the same notes that we had at USULC, right? And we start writing down um, our ideas, right? Uh, we also created some more posters for, like, homecoming and football and soccer and anything else, right? We also made it a lot more We Are Family posters because that was our theme for the 21-22 school year. So that was really cool. Um, forgot to totally mention about this part, but we had to also practice a dance. Uh, you see the exec decided, hey, we're going to have a dance, right? We're going to do our little dance for the uh, welcome assembly. 
And what we decided to do is that we were going to play this song. It's going to be called We Are Family, right? And it was, and it was that uh, song, right? And we were going to have this whole dance thing. And we had the dance squad of our school teaching us. Um, they were the drill team, the, the dance drill team, right? They actually came in and helped us. We were actually at Mrs. Government's house like a few weeks before the retreat. And um, they were basically teaching us how to dance better. And obviously it wasn't as advanced, advanced as what they usually do because, you know, we're not dancers, right? We're, we're just normal teenagers that do, that do the exec, right? So we're not really good at dancing, at dancing. So we practiced for a few weeks. And while we're, at, while we're here, we also were uh, practicing dancing. Um, so one of the exec members brought a speaker for that occasion. And we were outside in the driveway of the cabin practicing on doing this dance uh, that we're going to perform at the first day of the assembly for my senior year for the 21-22 school year, basically, you know? So that was cool. The next thing that we did is that we played the game called Reverse Charades. It was, it was like charades, but in reverse. I don't remember a lot of how we played it, so I'm going to have to kind of try my best to remember what how we played the Reverse Charades game. Basically, what would happen is that everyone would be split up into multiple groups, right? And there'd be one group trying to guess what the theme was, right? And if they got the theme, they get a point, right? So everyone else, all the other groups, would be trying to figure something out, right? For example, our team had ultimate, uh, ultimate fighting, right? So Mackenzie, right? She was part of our group, right? She said, oh, you know what, uh, what if we do ultimate frisbee? So we pretended to throw a fris frisbee and the group said, oh, you know what, hey, is it, um, is it ultimate frisbee? And we nod our head, oh, uh, well, actually, we kind of, I don't know, we kind of indicated that it was ultimate frisbee, but kind of not, too, because it was ultimate fighting. Next thing I did is I started punching the air, fighting, and everyone was so confused. Eventually, our time ran out, and we had to explain it was ultimate fighting, and they were like, oh, we get it, ultimate fighting, you know? And that was kind of the whole point, and that one was the only match I can remember. Also, we had one theme that was like, um, ring around the rosy. That was really easy, but ultimate fighting wasn't easy at all. But anyways, nothing special really happened except for Kimball's group. So Kimball's, Kimball's group was in line, right? They were the ones to judge us next, right? So anyways, peop, uh, and the theme that we got was suitcase, right? Um, and, uh, and people started doing like airplane motions, right? Boxes and stuff. And Kimball was having a hard time trying to guess it. So he was like, a uh, box, cardboard box or something like that, you know? Um, and then he says plane box, right? And everyone started laughing about what was going on, and eventually it was suitcase, right? It turned out it was a suitcase, right? And everyone turned that into a meme. Plain box actually became a meme throughout the whole exec. Everyone would be like, hey, Kimball, nice plain box. Or be like, hey, nice plain box. Um, plain box? Plain box. Hey, nice plain box over there. Hey, that's a nice drawing of a plain box. It became like a meme throughout the whole exec. So that was fun. Next, we ate dinner. And how we did, how we ate dinner, um, is that, um, is that we had an open campfire outside and we had hot dogs. I believe there were marshmallows, but I don't really quite remember, too. And, uh, it was fun. There was also, like, lemonade and stuff. And there were sticks. You put the hot dogs over and you, uh, cook hot dogs. And it was really, really fun. And one of the girls there said that, hey, this feels like a movie. Like, this is, like, the end of a movie. Like, this is the end of last year like the 20 the 21 school year and, this, and it feels like a movie and yeah it actually did kind of feel like a movie because you have a bunch of these teenagers camping cooking hot dogs so i i i thought i should just mention that because one of the girls on the exec said that it felt like a movie that we're outside in a campfire talking about like school stuff right and it did really feel like a uh a movie but for me it only felt like the only the beginning of a movie because um because, you know, this is my first month of being on the exec. Well, two months if you count the July thing, right? When I went to USULC. But that was really, really fun. Um, so, that was awesome. Next, Mr. Government came up to me and said, Hey, you ready to go down to get some uh, internet and contact your parents? Be like, yeah, I'm ready. 
So I get into Mr. Government's truck, right? And the best way I can describe Mr. Uh, Government is that he's like, he looks like, he looks like and acts like Peter Venkman. Like the guy from the Ghostbusters films, right? He was literally acting like that guy, bro. He was like really cocky, but he's, he was also really, really funny. I actually, um, and I actually had a class of him. He was actually my American government teacher, and his class was hilarious. I actually plan on telling several story times of me being in his class. Anyways, me and Mr. Government talk, and he's like, So, uh, Joey, what do you do? What grade are you in? And I've been talking to him, and I also ask him some questions, and be like, Hey, where do you work? And he told me, oh, Well, I'm actually, uh, I'm actually the athletic director for uh, the school. I'm also the uh, American government teacher, and he told me what he does, like, and I was like, oh, cool, I hope I get your class, and spoiler alert, I do end up getting his class, uh, I do end up getting American government with Mr. Government, that's the reason why his name is Mr. Government, because he taught American government, his class is amazing, I plan on telling several stories, but I talked to this guy for quite a bit, and he was awesome, uh, amazing dude, once again, he looks like and acts like Peter Venkman uh, from the Ghostbuster films, right? So that's the best way I can really describe what he acts like, really. So that was cool. I get to the bottom of this uh, mountain, right? And I call my parents, and we work something out. The plan is is that uh, tomorrow, um, during lunch or after lunch, I wasn't sure. Uh, I have my notes in front of me. I wasn't really quite sure at the time. But my grandpa was going to come and pick me up and take me to the eye doctor to get new glasses. And then he'll drive me up back to, up to the uh, cabin. So that's what happened. And then Mr. Government took me back to the cabin. When I get there, we were all told to go to bed. And that's what happened. And that's the end of day one. So day two rolls around and we all woke up. We ate breakfast. And when we were eating breakfast, I'm pretty sure we were eating cereal. I don't quite remember because it's food. Who remembers eating what they're eating, you know? No one does, really, unless you're a psychopath. But we are eating breakfast. Pretty sure it was cereal, but I'm not sure. And Mrs. Government comes in and says, All right, guys, we're going to go hiking. And she explains that, hey, we're going to go be hiking to this pond. And this pond is like 10 to 20 minutes away, uh, walking-wise. And uh, after we ate breakfast, we went on the, this hike to this pond. And um, a lot of the kids on the exec, right, um, got changed into their swimsuits because they wanted to play in the water and actually swim. And apparently this pond has, well, not apparently, I was there, but this pond has a, um, a dock, right? And it was perfect for jumping off of right, doing canning balls, and it was pretty deep, too, it was, like, I don't know, like, uh, 30 to 40 feet in width, um, and it, and it was pretty deep, too, like, 20 to 30 feet, um, deep, too, so it was a really, really cool pond, uh, so, yeah, so anyways, we walk up to this pond, right, and it was actually pretty cool, really, and these kids, right, decide, hey, you know what, let's just go ahead and jump off, so half the exec and some in the student council jump off this deck into this water. When everyone jumps off, we all notice that the water stinks. Like it smells, right? And now half of the kids also smell too because they jumped into a sewer. Well, it smelled like a sewer. It probably wasn't that bad, but it did, it did stink. And eventually we gave it the nickname of the poo water because it smelled horrible. So... Now we have a bunch of these kids, right, who are not smelling too great because they jumped into a pond, which doesn't smell great. So so anyways, we get done having fun. I didn't really do much. I just talked to some of the kids in the exec. So we all decided to head back to the cabin. And when we get back to the cabin, everyone still smells like crap, of course, because they got done swimming in the poo water. So we all sprayed each other off of hoses. Luckily, I didn't need to get sprayed because I didn't get into the water. So that was good. So uh, yeah, the next thing that we did was a uh, a few team building exercises, like a few games that involved teamwork. However, um, this was the time when my grandpa has agreed to come and pick me up. So what happened is that Mr. and Mrs. Government's son um, 
He's also a senior at the time of this story time, or going to be a senior. For the sake of the story time, I'm just going to call this kid Braxton because Braxton was a very, very chill dude, right? He doesn't care what you do as long as it doesn't really involve him, right? So he's really chill. He doesn't care what you do. And I feel like a Braxton perfectly fits this kid's name. So for the rest of the story time, when I'm talking about Mr. and Mrs. Government's son, I'm talking to Braxton. Not his real name, of course, uh, but he's a pretty, pretty chill dude. So anyways, um, he says that he'll take me down to, to find my grandpa because I only gave my grandpa the general directions on where he can find this cabin. So I told him to meet up in this area. Um, because I know what road it was on, but I have to go drive through the dirt road. So I told him, say, hey, meet me at this house next to this dirt road and we'll be there, right? So anyways, I get on a four-wheeler with Braxton, right? And Braxton drives me down. I try to talk to him, but um, but we're just driving down the road and it, and there's like wind going across. You know how it is. You know that feeling when you get wind in your face and you can't hear anything but the wind. Yeah, it was like really hard to talk to Braxton. But we get down there and my grandpa's there. We get to the bottom of this road, and my grandpa is there, and I say, hey, thank you so much, Braxton, and he drives back up to his parents' his cabin, and I get into the van with my grandpa, and he dry, and he starts driving me to the eye doctor place, right? And me and him talk about my experience so far at the retreat, and when we get to the uh, eye doctor, I get some new glasses, or I get a new prescription, and then my grandpa takes me back. The thing is, I didn't really exactly pay attention on where this cabin was, right? I wasn't really, really paying attention where I can find this cabin. And I was, um, I wasn't exactly sure, but I followed some general things. I'm like, oh yeah, this is the road. I remember seeing this house and we did find the house. We just got a little lost sometimes. Uh, we, um, so yeah, so we drive up these dirt roads it was I don't know it was bumpy but I was kind of concerned that we're gonna get stuck luckily we did not get stuck and we get there and when we get there I see that the exec and the center council are doing this rope game and I go over there right I get out of my grandpa's truck I said hey thank you so much and he turns around and drives out and I was talking to the exec and the center council and it turns out we were playing this team building game where they have to lift you up and have you cross the net without um, without touching the rope. And if you touch the rope, you have to start again. But here's the thing. Only one person can do one, um, one I don't know what it's called. But you have these, uh, this net was split up into different holes, right? And if one person uses one hole, then you can't use that hole ever again, right? So you have to use these different types of holes. And some holes are smaller and bigger than others right so it was like really really cramped so we had like the smaller girls who are um thinner we had them go through the net and eventually everyone goes through including myself and we took this photo and that was a real photo of us standing out there uh, uh completing our team building ex uh, exercise after that we went ahead Nothing special happened, really. We just ate lunch. That's about it. No, I do not remember what I ate. We just ate lunch. It was inside of the cabin, but nothing happened. So uh, let's move on to the next part, which is that we created paper airplanes. Well, it was more like cardboard airplanes. So this ne this next team building exercise, we had to create these cardboard airplanes. And whoever can throw it the farthest would actually win the the team building exercise. And what would happen is that Mrs. Government would uh, put us into groups of three or four people, and then we would find some cardboard, some tape, some markers, and then we would create a airplane, right? And then after everyone created their airplane, we would go to the deck, uh, the second story of the uh, of the of the cabin, and we will throw the airplanes, right? And whoever and whoever can throw the their airplane the fastest would not fastest the farthest would uh win the game basically. So anyways, I get assigned three to four people in my group right, and I start drawing some blueprints right. And I should and I suggest that we create a Delta Wing kind of aircraft, uh, similar to the B two bomber right, where the whole wing plus the body will be designed to create a uh, drag not drag to create lift. Right. 
and I tell them the reason why why we should go for this. And my idea is that hey, for something to stay in the air, it has to get as much lift as possible, right? So if we create a delta wing, right, and throw it really fast, right, and and it, and it gets a lot of air, right, then it will stay in the air longer and further. So I tell them, hey, we we should create this delta wing. Everyone in my group disagreed, right? And said that, hey, we should go for a more traditional design. And when I mean and what I mean by traditional is that you have like a Cessna type of airplane, right? We have wings at the front, right? And then you have like fins and a rudder at the back. And that's what we decided to do, right? Because I got outvoted. No one wanted to build a B2, even though that's what I wanted, right? So anyways, we create this airplane, right? And it looks like one of those airplanes that you would build out of those uh, kits, right? That you would get in elementary school after you win like a prize or something. One of those airplanes, right? Where you just build them, where you put the wings in the middle and uh, some fins at the back. It's, it's like basically one of those type of airplanes, right? Anyways, we create this airplane, right? And we decided to, we all decided to give it a name. And the name that we decided to give our aircraft was Flotatious to honor the history of Botatious from USULC. And everyone loved the name, so we gave it the name Flotatious. And we also colored it a little bit more. Uh, the airplane was a little bit back heavy, so we had to put some weight, a bit of a weight in the uh, nose of the aircraft. So it was a little heavy. Anyways, we created our aircraft. Everyone else creates their aircraft, right? And we get to the second deck of the cabin, and everyone starts throwing their aircraft, right? Some aircraft do a complete nosedive because they don't, they didn't do the whole aerodynamic thing, right? Or they didn't check the weight or whatever, so just nosedive. Some did a few flips before cl cl crashing down. Some, some of them flew pretty far, um, and then it was our turn. I once again, I was the one tasked with uh, throwing flotatious. And uh, this is the video. This is me throwing flotatious. Flotatious is next. Throw it upwards. Flotatious. Oh my god. Woo! Okay, flotatious. Nice. Uh, flotatious did good. Are you going to throw it? As you can see, that was a video clip of me throwing the airplane. It did really well. Everyone was cheering on flotatious. It flew past the fence and then it kind of turned to the left and crashed. Right, and then you had Mrs. Government actually going over there and picking it up, and that was pretty awesome. After our group went, a few more people went, and some airplanes either did a nose dive to the ground, or they did a few loops before crashing, or they just didn't do well at all. Um, who ended up winning was Kimball's group. Kimball uh, is the kid who made the uh, the music videos at USULC. He ended up winning. He created the probably the smallest airplane out of anyone else, and he just chucked it. Really, he just like threw it more. It didn't really fl fly. It just like he just threw it so hard, which it just went faster than anyone else's, and he got thrown the fat farthest. So he ended up winning. After that, the next thing that we had to do after our our uh, airplane team building exercise was to go practice the dance again for the first assembly that we we're gonna put on. So anyways, we go ahead and we practice for the dance again, and it was fine. Nothing really happened. Nothing special happened. We just practiced for the dance. We figured out, we figured some other stuff out, and that was about it. After the dance practice, Mrs. Government came up to us and said, All right, guys, get into your music groups um, because it's time to film our music videos. I'm not sure if I mentioned this earlier in the video because I, I'm, I don't know, I'm recording this commentary video over the course of a few days because there's a lot of material to cover, okay? But anyways, back to the story time. Um, at the start, when we had that first big meeting in the cabin, we had um, um, Mrs. Government told us that, that we would be making music videos and we we're going to be showing it, uh, sharing it with everyone in the whole uh, cabin, right? And... And we were split up into multiple groups. The people in my group were Mackenzie and a kid by the name of Milo. Milo is his real name. That is not a fake name. Uh, I actually got permission to use his name, so shout out to Milo. He's actually a very important part in this story time, which I will talk about him, like, in a little bit. Like, probably in the next few minutes. But he says some really funny things that I want to mention here on my YouTube channel. So... Shout out to Milo. He follows me on Instagram. I, you know who you are, man. You're a legend. You're hilarious. 
Uh, but I'll go talk. To, I'll talk about you in a little bit. Anyways, Mrs. Government said, "All right, it's time to make our music videos, right?" And we got split up into multiple groups. And the whole idea is we're gonna make these music videos, and then we're gonna share them at the end of our uh, retreat. And then Mrs. Government's gonna decide which one's the better one, and we get a prize. I'm not sure if we actually won a prize or it's just for fun. We just had to make a music video, and we were into uh, into a group. So, anyways, Mackenzie, right? She didn't have a lot of music on her phone because apparently we had a had already. Uh, apparently we had to. Um, we already had. Well, you know what? We actually knew about this music video before we started. I'm pretty sure. I don't know. I don't know. Apparently, Mrs. Government said, "Hey guys, make sure you guys got music because we're making music videos or something like that." A anyways, Mackenzie wasn't really prepared. She doesn't really have any good songs to make a music video, uh, make music videos out of, right? And she tried to ask Mrs. Government if we could um, get some service so we can download a song, and she said no. Um, so what ended up happening is that we had to make a music video out of a, I don't know what it was, like another video or a TikTok that uh, Mackenzie had or not. But anyways, we had to take a music video from, we had to take a, some music from another video and use it for our music video. And the music that we used was this hot rod music. I have no idea what it is. Basically, it's like a scene out of a movie where this guy is driving a car. He's really pissed off and he's like fighting and stuff while dancing at the same time. And that was kind of the whole point. Mackenzie, right, says, all right, this is the plan of the video. We're going to have this hot rod song. What we do is we're going to get into Milo's Jeep. And Joey, you're going to pretend you're going to start the, the car, right, and p turn on the radio. And then you're going to get out all fighting. And then we're going to take place. Uh, we're going to take turns um, being the character fighting the air. And so anyways, we were doing this music video. And I was really good at the whole fighting thing. You guys will see what I'm talking about when I actually show you guys the music videos. I kind of took it way too seriously where I'm like all punching and stuff. It actually looked really good. I also told Mackenzie that I think it would be funny if we get some text on the screen that says ultimate fighting to make fun of the charade game that we played. And she thought it was a great idea and she ends up uh, putting that text in the uh, music video because we thought it would be funny. So anyways, we finish up with the music video, and Milo wanted to do a few extra quick scenes at the end where he pretend he dies or whatever, and we go ahead and we film that, and it was hilarious. You guys will see what, we, uh, what we're talking about in a little bit, and uh, yeah, that was the end of us filming the uh, music videos. After that, we did another planning session. Nothing really special happened at this planning session. We just talked more about like homecoming and the first assembly for the school. Nothing really um, important happened. So, next thing that we did was our Spirit Bowl. So, the Spirit Bowl, basically what it is, it's basically like the Spirit Bowl at USULC. Uh, there was multiple groups, right? And they had their own color, their own theme, right? And I was the blue team, right? Um, and we just played these games. And the games were random, and I don't really remember them. Except for this one game where you're trying to get like, there's like peanut butter or something sticky and you're trying to land it on your nose. It was really weird. Honestly, I don't really remember a lot. I only remember taking pictures and winning one event and people cheering me on and I actually won one thing. I had no idea. Uh, so that was what it is. After that, we ate dinner and we went to bed for the night and that was the end of day two at the retreat. So day three starts. And day three, in my opinion, is probably the most craziest day out of any other day. And I'll tell you why. So, the first thing that we did when we wake up was we ate breakfast, obviously, right? Then we went ahead, we did a planning session. And after the planning session, we went on a hike. And we hike up this big mountain, this big uh, hill, right? And we had two assignments, right? The first assignment is that we had to be quiet, right? And we had to, like, look around and find, like, objects that were meaning. Uh, like, it, we had to find objects and relate that somehow to the exec, right? Um, and the second assignment, I don't really quite remember, but it was something kind of similar to that, right? So anyways, we start this hike. We were told that we had to be quiet, right? And thus we were. And it was 
really, really peaceful because no one was making jokes. No one was talking. You were climbing up this big, big, big mountain, right? And and there wasn't a lot of trees. It was really, really open. Really, It was actually really, really open, right? And I don't know. It was just like a few trees, a few rocks, and nothing but like yellow wheat, right? Yellow brownish wheat because it's August and, the, and all the greenery is like all gone. That's what I've been seeing, right? And anyways, we climb up this mountain. I find a few objects. I find this feather, right? I actually found it back at the cabin, uh, but I had this feather with me, right? And I was going to tie something in back to the Native Americans or whatever. So I pick up this um, feather, right? Because it kind of looks cool, right? Some other kids pick up a few things. We look around the environment. And we eventually made it to the top of this tree because Mrs. Government said, Hey, go up to that tree over there and we'll meet up, right? So when we make it to the tree, I notice this girl, right? Talking to Mrs. Government. And what I overhear is that she got stung by a black wasp and Mrs. Government was obviously concerned asking her if she um, if she's allergic or she's been stung before. And it turns out and luckily she wasn't allergic, but Mrs. Government wanted her to be very cautious and to keep an eye out on it. Luckily, she wasn't in any danger because she wasn't allergic or anything. It's not really important to the story time, but I thought I should go ahead and mention it just to give you guys more details. But anyways, everyone finishes walking up. Mrs. Government had to call over some people because they got a little lost. Uh, because even though it's a mountain, you can still see people because there wasn't a lot of trees, right? Uh, so they called over. Some people came over. And uh, yeah. So anyways, we start talking about the items in our things to tie it in, right? And I talk about my feather, right? And I say something about the Native Americans, how they were the first ones to be in the United States, right? And I said, hey, this feather represents uh, our school logo, which is an Indian, right? Um, and I don't know, made that connection, and that was it. Next, I start talking about the scenic view, because that was our second assignment was to take a look at our surroundings and tied into the leadership of exec or whatever so i start talking about my thing right and i say exactly this i was looking at this tree right and i was thinking wow that's a pretty cool tree and then i said you know what you can't have this tree without this mountain right and this mountain is connected to the great state of idaho right and i said you can't have the state of idaho without the ground and the ground's connected to this continent of America, but the continent is connected to the planet of Earth. But you can't just stop at planet Earth. You have to think about the sun. You have to think about the solar system and the Mars. Yeah, you heard me right. I talked about Mars. And everyone thought I was really unique because I talked about Mars. And the main reason why I talked about Mars is because I'm a big fan of Elon Musk. Still a big fan of him, especially after the Twitter takeover. So, uh, yeah, uh, so I made that quote. And everyone liked it because I related it to, to Mars. I also said something about the school as well, but I don't quite remember. So everyone goes ahead and shows off their item and relates it back to leadership, right? And everyone talks about the scenic view because you're supposed to do that. Don't re I don't really remember anyone else's item or what they said except for Milo. Milo is the same dude that was in my music video with Mackenzie, right? And he said some pretty funny stuff when we were on this mountain and on the way back. And more after. You see, um, he said some pretty funny stuff. And one girl on the exec, she's been keeping a log of all the quotes that everyone on the exec was saying, right? And she would write them down. And then at the end of the year, she would give out quote books. And I got a quote book, right? So I can make videos referencing these quotes right so this is exactly this is word to word on what milo said about his item when i saw this branch i thought about how bad it would hurt if someone hit me with it and everyone thought that was funny because you know <clears throat> because yeah it would hurt if someone hits you right so everyone was laughing at that and the girl that i'm pretty sure she was a historian at the time i'm not sure um, she wrote it down on the quote book, but that's not the only quote that Milo said, right? He had some other amazing quotes that I will mention shortly. So anyways, Mrs. Government said, all right, guys, we're all done here. You may talk, 
Uh, we let's head back to the cabin and we eat lunch. So anyways, we start walking down this mountain again on the way back to the cabin, right? And I was in a small group with Milo, right? With a few other girls and a few other people in the exec, right? And we were near the poo water pond, the same pond where if you jump in, you would smell like crap and someone had to spray you off. That pond, right? And we were walking by it and I hear Milo saying, I was looking at all this dead grass and I was thinking it would... It would be really easy to light on fire. And everyone was looking at him saying, what the heck, dude? You okay? All right? And it was like, it was kind of funny, bro, because he was, he was not wrong. The grass here was extremely dried out, and it probably would take a single match for it to all burn down. And one of the other girls said, well, if there's a forest fire, I know who to blame. And I thought that was funny. So I don't know. I liked that quote. I actually remember the quote that, I don't know. I just like that quote. I was looking at this dead grass and I was thinking it would be really easy it would be really easy to light on fire. I like that quote. It's a good quote. I like it. It's really really nice. So anyways, we went back down to the cabin and we ate lunch, right? And after we ate lunch, Mrs. Government made the announcement, "All right, guys, it's time to take our exec pictures." And and uh, when meanwhile when we were eating lunch, right? A car drove up and it was a local photography group, right? And they also had a box of our exec sweaters. Um, so anyways, this is the first time we got our exec sweaters. You see everyone in the is in the exec, not the student council, everyone in the exec, excluding the student council, gets a exec sweater. And on the right, you get your name, and on the left, you get your position. For me, I had uh, Joey on the right and Media on the left, right? And it was in all in our school colors, right? And it was really, really cool looking, right? We also have been given white t-shirts. And so anyways, everyone changes their shirt, right? We put on our sweaters. And what we do is that we go outside. We go into this field, right? And we had this local photography group. And they were really, really amazing. And one of the girls in this photography group actually used to be part of the exec too. So she's like really familiar with Mrs. Government and stuff. So anyways, we're out here taking individual photos, right? And uh, I will show those photos in a little bit. Um, but anyways, I want to show you guys what my exec sweater looked like. So here's that video. So right here, this is the uh, exec sweater. This is the this is what I wore to school. Um, so people knew I was in the exec. Um, How does my school colors, which is blue, white, uh, gold. Um, and I didn't point to you. You saw what happened, but. This is my exec sweater. Um, this is my name right here. They put my name on it. So you guys know this is actually legit. And they put in my position, which is media. Um, nothing on the back. And that's the whole sweater. I'll put it on for you guys. This is what I got in August of 2021 at the exec retreat. Uh, basically, I went camping with the exec. So that was fun. Um... I actually based uh, uh, how it happened is uh, the way we got these uh, sweaters is that we had to uh, get some measurements done. And so I took my favorite jacket of all time, which is that Disney one, that Disney jacket um, that you guys see me in my other real life videos. And I just used that measurements because we we're supposed to take the measurements of a jacket. And honestly, I should have done a bigger jacket. Like it fits, right? It it fits. It 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 does fit. Um, it's just a little small. Wish it was a little bigger, but it's great. It feels great. Mm -hmm. Fits great. So I would walk. Go to. I would go to school, looking like this, right? Usually with a white shirt underneath. It's kind of the best. Sometimes I'll button it up. Uh, well, not like there, but like probably at the bottom, like this, or like in the middle, sometimes. Like this. Okay, that looks really stupid, but I button some buttons up sometimes if I'm, like, filling up to it. So, here's proof that I did actually have an exec sweater. This is what everyone wore on the exec. This is where we went to games with. This is what uh, we went to school with. So, that was really cool. Also, we went and did assemblies in these things, too. Really cool piece of uh, Joey gaming history there. Also... I found the uh, quote book. Um, this is the quote book I was referring to in the video. Um, it has our um, our mission statement at the back. 
Uh, so that was cool. Um, so uh, yeah, so this is proof that this sweater actually exists. That was a video of me showing you guys my exact sweater and the quote book, just so you guys know it actually existed. Anyways, what we did is we took individual photos. Here's mine. It looked really, really, really good. Um, we also had black and white photos as well. They gave us black and white as well, right? But we also took group photos. We took one group photo with everyone in the exec and then everyone, in including the student council plus Mrs. Government, in the uh, photo as well so here all here's that as well and those videos look so 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 good meanwhile while everyone was taking photos we had these cows right and these cows would get into the photos right and they would be really annoying and obviously we don't want cows in the photo so this one kid right he was kind of crazy he was like chasing the cows off and stuff not really important i thought i just should go ahead and talk about it uh, I actually think there is one photo with the cows in the background, I'm not sure. I'll show it on the screen, if so, I just remember seeing a cow in one of the photos. I could be wrong though. So anyways, there were these cows and we took our exec photos and they looked so, so, so good. And I ended up posting uh, the group photo on my school's Instagram account because I ran this school's Instagram account, so that was what it was. So anyways, after we we were done taking photos, we had to take off our sweater and put them in back in the box because technically we haven't really paid for them yet so it wasn't ours and we also had to take off the white shirts and put on our regular clothes again and that's what happened so anyways we head back to the cabin and mrs government comes out and said all right guys it's time to make a mosaic a mosaic for those that don't know what a mosaic or mosaic or what is i think it's mosaic i don't know for those that don't know what a mosaic is a mosaic is like a 3d and art right what you do is that you would go outside find like plants sticks animals well just more like insects really and then you would create this masterpiece uh, you create like art right so anyways we got like 30 minutes to like an hour and we had to go around collecting items like grass flowers some girls some people on the exec uh, got like grasshoppers wasps bees and they, they then they would staple them to their mosaic for me i try to make like a tower, like a 3D tower, right? What I would do is I would go find sticks and then we would, I would get glue and I would glue, glue them together. And it wasn't really, really working well. And at the end, uh, at, the, at the end of our time limit, we had to present our mosaic, right? And we were outside in this open area where we threw the airplanes, right? And, and everyone starts presenting the mosaic, right? And I show mine and I said, uh, and I said, all right, guys, I call my mosaic the disaster. And I got onto the details on why it's a disaster. And I told them, saying, hey, it's for sale for $3.2 million. And, and that was really cool. Um, I don't really remember anyone else's mosaic except for one person. Well, actually two people because this, invo this also involved Milo. Milo had a, had a mosaic called the Triple Homicide. He says, I like to call this piece Triple Homicide. That's another quote. Uh, I just saw it in the quote book when they were talking about the mosaic. So I just decided to put it in here. So that was cool. But that's not the main guy I was talking about. You see, there's another kid, right? This other kid, right? He had also a really awesome quote that I'm going to say now. And I quote, This is my dragon lair. And this is my dragon. And proceeds to take off the cover of this built cave that he built out of like sticks and stones and stuff. And he reveals a snake. And instantly everyone freaks out because no one expected to see a snake in this guy's mosaic. So easily this kid won the game, right? Of creating the best mosaic. Because not also did he create like an interesting mosaic by building a little cave with a little thing on it. But he had a snake inside that cave and called it is a uh, dragon which i thought was awesome bro like i just i don't know that's just uh, awesome to see that this kid i don't know it was honestly my favorite one all the girls were freaking out they were all scared all about it right everyone was freaking out and it was a good laugh everyone laughed at it at the end and eventually mrs government said oh well well you had your fun release the snake i don't want it in my cabin and the kid did so that was fun nothing interesting happened after that so uh yeah Next, we played our senior games. 
At the very beginning of the video, I mentioned that everyone in the who everyone who was a senior on the exec had to create a game, right? And and it had to be a teamwork game, right? And I, most of the games I don't really remember, really. But my game was kind of simple. What you would do is that um, I would line people up randomly, right, and tell people, like, right, "Okay, guys, try to line yourself up in." By your birthdays. Try to line yourselves up using your birthdays. But you can't talk to each other. So people had to use like sign language to talk to each other. Eventually people found out a way to write down on a piece of paper to communicate to each other. And everyone was lined up and that was my game. It wasn't it wasn't really good. But it, was, it is what it is. The next thing that we did is that we watched all the music videos that everyone has created. So what we did is that. Uh, Braxton, right? Braxton carried over this projector, right? And he set it up and Mrs. Government, right? Had all the videos. They had like flash drives. They transferred the video somehow. I'm not sure, right? And so anyways, Mrs. Government starts playing these videos, right? And these music videos were funny, bro. Some of them were, were more generic than others, but a lot of them were really good. People really liked my music video and another kid's music video. It was really, really popular. And we couldn't really decide a winner on who had the better video, uh, music video because uh, both me and Mackenzie and Milo's videos were pretty good, but some other kids' group music video was also really good. It was actually really, really funny. I actually want to actually share those videos with you guys because they were amazing. I want to share them with you. Unfortunately, just like the music videos from USULC, I can't play the whole video. Um, well, not the whole video, but I can't play the audio of the video because of copyright, unfortunately. So I'm gonna have to change the audio of the music videos because it is unfortunately copyrighted and I can't really play that here on YouTube. So here are the music videos. <laughs> Every single day I'll be making moves Till I'm buried in my grave 
Through the system, I don't wanna be a slave. I've been doing shit my way, uh, or the highway. And in the driveway is a nice range. Cause I grind through the climb, I invite pain. You never hear me, bitch, nah, I don't complain. Just gotta flip the switch and you can go and obtain anything you want, anything you need. Your mind's got the key ingredient, it's belief. Uh, they deceive with the negativity. But I just slide right by that energy. I'm inspired by worth I desire your worst So you can just hide while I work I ain't tired, you first I'll write a second, third verse About the lies you go disperse You never de-
I hope you guys enjoyed those videos because those videos are amazing. I had a fun time making mine and watching all the other ones and I am so glad I was able to show those videos. Because honestly, I was not sure if I was able to play those videos here and I'll tell you why. You see, I went on Instagram and I asked everyone that was part of the exec in 21 and said, hey, do you have any of those music videos that, we, that you recorded or made at the retreat? And most of them said no, that they have not. Except for one girl. And I'm not sure if she's watching this video, but if you are, you're amazing. Thank you so much. And she was able to give me all the music videos because she was the one actually that sent all the videos to the projector or whatever. So she had all of them on her phone or on her computer. I'm not sure, but she sent me all the videos, all the music videos from the retreat to me so I can share it with you guys. And I, and I am so thankful. So you know who you are. Thank you so much for sending me those videos. I am so grateful. So uh, yeah. So after that, we played uh, the music videos. Next thing that we did is that we had to go home. Before we went home, Mackenzie's car broke down. So Mr. Government was trying to fix it. And I don't know, there was some weird tech problem with Mackenzie's car. Uh, eventually she got it fixed, but it was way after everyone went home. So anyways, everyone went home. My parents came and picked me up. Well, actually, we carpooled back home, actually, uh, not home. We actually carpooled back to the high school, right? And then my parents came and picked me up, right? And I went home, right? And I made some YouTube videos. And when I was at home making some YouTube videos, creating content for you guys, I get a notification from the group me. And it was a picture of Milo at a local fast food restaurant here in my town. And I didn't go for reasons, right? I just wanted to stay home and make videos because I had enough socializing with people for the day, right, and for the whole weekend, and, uh, yeah, we have now reached the end of the video, thank you guys so much for watching, uh, this is my fifth story time of me being on the student council, more videos are coming out very, very soon, it's just, this video took a long time to prepare, because there's a lot of information that I want to make sure is correct, this video is almost an hour long, and I probably should have split this up into two parts, but I didn't, but anyways, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Like and subscribe and see ya. Peace.